Okay, welcome back to the getting to know you videos. Now, at this point in the tutorial videos, we kind of take a departure from what we've been doing. So I promised you that we would talk about remote repositories. So just a recap, everything we've been doing now, right? When we come to like get in it, get commit, get status, you know, get checkout when we start creating branches and everything like that, everything we've been doing up to this point has been on our local repository. Now, let me remind you what a repository is. A repository is basically a folder that has the smarts to keep track of history, keep track of branches and stuff like that, right? So that's what a repository is. And when you're working in a repository, you call that your local repository. So your computer, your server, your whatever you're working on could have, you know, millions of local repositories, right? Just like it can have millions of folders, right? So you could have, you know, 10 folders and you dive into each one of those folders and you type git in it, you're turning each one of those folders into a repository. And when you're working in those, those are your local repositories, right? So that's what a repository is. It's a folder with some smarts that's sitting on your computer, right? Well, the beautiful thing about Git and what we talked about with this distributed, uh, distributed revision control is that your repository can actually talk to another repository um, and another kind of version of your same repository. So we had our repository, right? We had, what did we have? Um, I believe it was my piece of software. Yeah, so we had my first piece of software. So this is a repository that we had and we checked in a bunch of things. Now, somebody else can actually have a copy of this repository sitting on their machine and we can actually communicate with that repository. We can start saying, okay, I've made a bunch of changes. Let me give you those changes. Or you could say, have you made any changes and bring them back, right? And this is where the idea of, of uh, remote repositories comes into play, right? So let me just uh, open up my, fan my fancy little diagram about that. Um, so again, everything we've been doing up till now has been in this blue box. It's all contained in our local repository. But remember, like I said, with Git, right, this could be one of many repositories, right? And so each one of these could have a copy of my piece of software, my first piece of software, and we could communicate with any one of these. We could say, okay, this guy on the left, I'm going to give you some of my changes. I'm going to let you know all the commits that I made. I'm going to even let you know some of, some of my branches if you want, right? And I can also pull down information from that guy. I can say, have you created any branches yourself? Okay, yeah, let, give me those branches, right? Or uh, have you made any changes on the master branch or the blue feature branch? Give me those changes, right? I can communicate with this guy because this guy is equivalently his own repository, right? This is the thing about distributed revision control. Every one of these people could have their own copy of this repository, right? So... You know, you communicate with this guy, communicate with this guy, whatever. You can communicate with all these uh, versions of your repository, right? And we'll get into how those people get copies of your repository. Now, there's kind of a problem here, and this is really the kind of dilemma with, with uh, distributed revision control. Because let's say you have, uh, you know, 10 of these people, and it's very possible that you have an organization of 10 people, you know, working with Git. You know, how do you know how to communicate with all these different repositories, right? You have to query nine different repositories and ask them, can you give me all your changes? And then, oh, by the way, here's all my changes as well. You have to do that nine times. That's getting pretty tedious. And then each one of those people has to do that nine times, right? You're starting to get some finite math and factorials to figure out how many, you know, pulls and pushes you have to do to get all that information. Well, wouldn't it be nice if all these people agreed upon you know, one place that we're going to store a, a version of our repository, we're going to have our, another repository, but, you know, we're going to all collectively agree to push our changes to that repository on a regular basis so that if anybody wants the latest up-to-date code, they can go to that, quote, central repository. So this is kind of like this in-between solution, right? It's kind of like, it's kind of like distributed revision control with uh, kind of a flavor of centralized re revision control. Because what we're doing is we're saying, we're going to agree upon this central place, this central repository, that by the way, technologically speaking, is equivalent to any one of us. We all have our own repository, right? and we can all do the same things. But just, you know, in human interaction, we're going to say, we're going to agree upon this, right? And it turns out that Git developers all over the world, people who use Git all over the world, have decided and they've agreed upon a single place to store their code centrally, right? So they can interact with people. And there's no saying, again, Git doesn't restrict you to use this because Git's distributed, so you can do this anywhere, right? You can do it on your own server if you want. If you want to set up your own server and everybody agrees to do it with that, that's okay. But millions of Git uh, users have decided on a single place to store that, and that's called GitHub. 
Okay, so what GitHub is, is really just this cloud-based uh, service. It's, it's a server online that you can host a repository on, okay? And in fact, you can host many repositories on. You can say, copy my first piece of software repository into the cloud there, and then give other people some access to that so they can push and pull and interact with that. Now, their interactions, they're pushing and pulling and, all, and fetching and stuff like that. All these interactions with the GitHub repository is no different than pushing and pulling from any of these guys, right? It's just semantically we've agreed that this is going to be the place that everybody's going to push their changes up to regularly. So that way we don't have to query everybody that's working on our project. We just do this uh, in the middle at the GitHub, okay? So again, technologically speaking, GitHub, the way you interact with it is no different than any other repository. But again, we've agreed upon this semantically. Now, GitHub has a bit more stuff to it. It's not just a server that you can have a repository on it because it has a it has a graphical UI to do merges, which is really nice. It has this idea of pull requests, which allows you to manage how you merge. So you have some controlled merging. So people aren't just merging back and forth. You can actually have some comments and some, you know, some control there. And it has, has some really big, it has some bigger collaborative capabilities. It has this abilities that you can fork in other words work on somebody else's project and stuff like that there's a whole whack of stuff we'll cover in github but what i want to kind of get at, at this point is that we're about to make that leap into distributed uh and sorry remote repositories and github is one of those remote repositories that we're going to be interacting with primarily okay on to the next video